was for entertainment purposes only. And if you want true legal advice, contact your own lawyer. So uh, we talked about earlier we're going to talk about the parents of the Las Vegas uh, massacre are suing many gun manufacturers uh, and uh, some dealers saying that they – uh, basically allowed this bump stock. The bump stock, which is uh, uh, when you take a rifle, it somehow hits your shoulder. I've actually tried to shoot one with it. I don't. I, I don't. That's weird. I, I've tried it once and I can't um, figure it out. But it, it, it bumps. It hits your shoulder and then it keeps pulling. It makes your hand pull back and pull the trigger. And they're arguing it, it's you're making it more like an automatic weapon, which is against the law. And that's what happened in this Las Vegas massacre. The individual had a bump stock and was able to shoot a, a, over a thousand rounds in 10 minutes, which they're arguing that he wouldn't have uh, been able to do had you uh, not had these bump stocks. And and the issue is going to come down to what's called the protection of lawful commerce in arms act and that is an act that was passed july 20 uh, 29th or 24th 2005 that basically says that man manufacturers of firearms and dealers are not going to be held liable when a crime occurs uh, with their products but there's still you know things that they they argue that they can say if it's a defective product a breach of contract uh, um, type of things, or if the manufacturer has any criminal misconduct, they could still be liable. But in general, this was a blanket over the top of the manufacturers of, of rifles and guns that make it so they can't be sued for a crazy guy going out and shooting people. Now, there's smart lawyers out there, and they're trying to figure ways around this. So the first real – I mean, there's a number of times that this has been – uh, you know, uh, c come up against what's the word? I guess you uh, challenged, challenged. And one of the the well known one that we talked about at Radio Law Talk. If you go back to around March of 2019, uh, we discussed this and what happened in Connecticut Superior Court, October 2016. Um, a lawsuit was filed by the families of the victims of the Sandy Hook Elementary case against all of these manufacturers. Well. Guess what? The lower court held, look, under the uh, – it's called the PLCAA, the Protection of Lawful Commerce and Arms Act. There's no way you could sue these manufacturers and threw it out. Well, the Supreme Court – again, this is the state Supreme Court of Connecticut – reversed it and said, yes, you could. And if you go back to our podcast, we talk all about that. Now – the parents of the Las Vegas massacre shooting are kind of trying to get around the PLCAA and say, look, it, it had nothing to do with the protections you're allowed. You manufactured this bump stock with full knowledge that it makes it into a automatic weapon, which is against the law, and you had knowledge of that. And and you and, you know and actually, my understanding is. The gun manufacturers didn't manufacture it. It was the uh, – there's some offshoot companies that, that – that Yeah, an accessory company. Yeah, an accessory company yeah. that do it. So I don't know how the they're arguing that the gun manufacturer is going to be liable outside the PLCAA protections uh, of that law that protects them. I guess the only argument would be that you knew about these uh, bump stocks and allowed it. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, and, and just because um, Connecticut Connecticut decided a certain way. It doesn't mean that Nevada is going to decide the same way. Right. Uh, it may be persuasive type of arguments on on both sides, but it it's not a sure thing. That's one of the genius of our United States is that each state can have different laws and different opinions and different state Supreme Court decisions. And I, I think one of the things that would be borne out in the discovery process, for example, is you know they they sue the gun manufacturer they get the communications and what if during the discovery process they find communications between the manufacturer and then the accessories maker where they say you know look we can't make it because of law that looks like this but i'll tell you what we will we will put these features in the gun that will be easily modifiable by your stuff and then they can come to you and buy this and put it on and well, well now you're just trying to skirt the law by telling the consumer if you want this kind of gun you got to go through a two-step process instead of a one-step process we'll sell you the gun here and then you go there and and to get the accessory and that is borne out through discovery if there's liability like that and so they've got a 
see what's going on there. Yeah, I think the underlying question is, is the bump stock protected by this um, uh, lawful commerce arms act? Yep. Because it's an accessory rather than being an actual um, gun. Yeah, if you want to talk about this, is 855-LAW-RADIO or tweet us at Radio Law Talk. But this is not going to go away because there is a big fight, you know, among the, you know, right to bear arms people that are going to, uh, I, I bet this is, someday it's going to go to the United States Supreme Court. Oh, exactly, especially if you get two states that decide the question differently and there's a split in decisions. That's when the Supreme Court more likely is going to put its hand on this. Well, the other issue also that I see, and a big one for this, is, is causation. I mean, a lot of people use the, the cigarette industry, tobacco industry, as saying, see, well, they made a product that's inherently dangerous, and even though people t- choose to use it, it can happen, and, and secondhand smoke can help somebody out. So if somebody chooses to smoke, a third party can be harmed. They do that. Well. I think it's uniform of everything that gets out there with tobacco. The biggest issue I see with the guns here is the argument, okay, so if they didn't have the bump stock, if that's what you got the problem with, if the amount of bullets per second or per minute can be fired, if that's what you have the problem with, if they didn't have that, he would have killed X number of people, but because he had it, he killed Y, which is much greater. So there would be no liability to the company for only – for producing an item that only takes the life of 10 people, but there is liability if there is 100 people. I mean, is it's either inherently dangerous or it's not. And to assess liability because the numbers go up, I think it make it a little bit more difficult. I'm not saying that that is an absolute winner for the gun rights. I'm saying that that's an argument that they're going to have to address in the course of litigation that's different than, say, other products liability cases that maybe came up i i don't know that just seems to me to be something that's a little different there yeah so we'll see what happens it's, it's, it's going to be a good one to follow it's going to be one we're going to follow so go to the website radiolawtalk.com that's radiolawtalk.com